Welcome to the DCU Sports Grounds in Dublin for the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup quarter final between DCU Docus Aaron and the Waterford Institute of Technology. Well, the crowd is building ahead of this last eight encounter. It's going to be quite a good one as well between WIT, who've won it nine times, and DCU Docus Aaron, who've actually never won it, but they have come close on occasion. They've won the league recently, and of course, a couple of years back, they got to a final. They are chock full of talent as well. WIT doing their warm-up. Uh, we'll get to the team in detail in a few minutes, but uh, Brian Hogan, formerly of Kilkenny and UCD, we know Austin Gleeson isn't available for WIT, and that is a huge, huge loss. Um, mass, massive loss, Oshin. I mean, um, Austin is a hard man to manage the best of times at inter county level. Uh, and on an occasion like today, you know, he would have been the talisman for Watford. I mean, he would have been the guy who's supposed to be the most experienced that they would have looked to, particularly playing away from home. So, huge loss for them. Um, but look, it's that's the nature of the competition. You're going to pick up injuries and you just, you just have to push on without them. You know, and they have enabled replacements in, uh, in Conal Flood coming in for him. We'll get to the team in detail in just a moment, Brian. But uh, what are you expecting from tonight's game? In dry conditions, granted cold and a bit of a breeze not as strong as it was here last night for the Sigerson Cup final at DCU DE beating uh, IT Carlo yeah I mean look a typical I suppose Fitzgibbon uh, quarter final it's going to be it's going to be fast paced you know uh, physical I'd imagine you know and uh, the early exchanges I'm sure will be will be tasty you know DCU being at home or want to set the, set the tempo early um, but you know both sides the, the style of hurling nowadays you know trying to hold on possession work it out will negate any kind of breeze that would be there I'd imagine you know pretty much you know it's as good a conditions as you can expect for uh, this time of year and uh, the pitch looks uh, you know in great condition as well there are some names you will definitely know involved this evening let's take a look at the DCU Dukas here in starting 15 we suspect this may change but for the moment here it is Paddy Smith of Dublin the rock at the centre of defence Oshin Foley from Wexford he's not too bad he's right behind him Evan Shefflin of course enjoyed success with Baddy Hale Shamrocks in the uh, All-Ireland Club Championship Damien Reck and Dara Gray quite a solid pairing in midfield Rory O'Connor at corner forward three points from play against Leash over the weekend he will be a go-to man he was part of the team last year that reached the semi-final and were unlucky to be beaten by UCC James Bergen Ria McBride John Donnelly James Burke all decent players Adrian Mullen not named but we suspect unless he's injured he may get some game time well, for WIT they aren't as kind of stand out in a name sense as they would be from the DCU Dokers Aaron team but there's still some very solid hurlers in there Tommy Walsh is a late replacement for Shane Walsh Tommy Walsh from Tullerone but not that Tommy Walsh he though is a very decent hurler an All-Ireland club winner with his club recently Conal Flood son of Shawnee Flood from Wexford is in at midfield he replaces Ozzy Gleeson and uh, Austin is a hard man to replace but uh, Connell will give it a good go Jack Prendergast, Tom Barron and Robbie Flynn are quite a pacey and strong half forward line. Kieran Kerwin is the full forward. He's a ball winner. He's got really, really strong and good hands. Uh, he's a Waterford inter-county footballer, but uh, as we say, decent with the hurley as well. He got two goals against TU at Dublin City campus earlier in the competition. Well, as we say, some standout talent on show tonight. Paddy Smith from Clontarf, the fullback of DCU among them, Brian Hogan. Yeah, Paddy's you know heard for he's really come into the fore I think for the last couple of years for Dublin. He's obviously been very impressed with him. I've seen him. Obviously had a hard day at the office uh, on Sunday uh, with Kenny down Nolan Park. But he's a player who's aggressive. You know, attacks the ball and he generally uses the ball very well. Conal Flood, we've already spoken about him, but uh, he is a very, very promising young talent. His career has been held up by injury. He had the choice of soccer or hurling. He was an Ireland under-18 soccer player, but uh, I think it's good for WIT and it's certainly good for Wexford that he's gone down the hurling route. Absolutely, a big addition to WIT and to Wexford. You know, as you mentioned, he's been unfortunate with injuries in the early part of his career, but he's good lineage there. You know, he's made a tough stuff, and um, you know, it's great to see him out here tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing. Him. I haven't seen much of him up to date, but uh, by all accounts, he's, uh, he's he's one to watch. Well, we'll stay with Wexford and Rory O'Connor of DCU Docus Aaron, a very very decent corner forward at club, college, and county level. Yeah, if, if Flood is one to watch, I suppose R Rory O'Connor is one we've, se we've seen a fair bit of over the last two or three seasons. You know, a player who's really established himself in the, in the senior setup for, for Wexford. Um, at such a young age, I suppose, he's an awful lot of hurling done and has had a really impressive year last year for Wexford. He's the guy I suppose DCU will be looking to, to for, for goals uh, tonight, you know, and, and he's well capable of causing havoc if he gets the right ball. Of course, the winners of this go on to play UCC on February 8th. That's back here at the DCU Sports Ground for Electric Ireland Fela weekend. 
That would be quite the contest. Uh, also going on tonight, by the way, is NUI Galway and IT Carlo. That's going on in Carlo. It started at half six. You will be able to watch highlights from that game a little bit later on on the uh, GA Higher Education social media channels. You'll also find those uh, highlights on the Electric Ireland social media channels. Uh, Brian Hogan, that will be a particularly uh, tight game, I imagine, although it's ongoing, so I could be uh, made a right fool of here, depending on what the score is. But tonight we're expecting a good one as well. Yeah, we are. No, I mean, um, I saw Carlo IT there in the, in the game against GMIT, and you know they they looked they, they did the job. I suppose they were looking overly impressive, but obviously the big game for them was against UCD the week previous. So that'll be a good contest against NUIG, who have a, you know, uh, I'm not sure what the result is at the moment. It's ongoing tonight. You know, I'm, expect, I'm looking forward to this match. There's a couple of players, as we mentioned already, that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing out here tonight. And uh, you know, um, yeah, the conditions are great, and it should be set up for a, a great contest. Mary Immaculate College and UCC already through to the semi-finals. Who is going to join them? We'll find out over the course of the evening. Will it be Waterford Institute of Technology or DCU Docuseran out of this quarterfinal? And in the other quarterfinal, IT Carlo, managed by DJ Carey, taking on NUI Galway. James Bergen of Conaghy Shamrocks enjoyed club success, uh, recently winning an All-Ireland Junior title. They beat Russell Rovers of Cork. In the final, there's a couple of guys who had uh, good success with their club recently. Rory O'Connor, as we say, uh, on the mark again for Leash or for Wexford against Leash over the weekend. DCU Docus Aaron with an awful lot of talent. Paul O'Dwyer, by the way, from Carlo, is our referee. And the captain of Waterford Institute of Technology is Kevin Hassett from Drummond Inch. And uh, as a fullback, I'm sure he's had plenty of practice over the years marking Seamus Callan in training, and that has uh, sharpened him up somewhat. Yeah, you're not going to get, I suppose, uh better training than uh, having to go in and mark uh, an all-star and you know uh, I suppose one of the marquee forwards in the country you know when you go back go into club training so look I'm sure this won't phase him tonight he's got a you know pretty uh, tough task with that with that uh, DCU forward line you know as we mentioned with Rory O'Connor on one side and James Bergen on the other and uh, Jim Ryan from Kilkenny in the middle so you know and you know that DCU squad in general I mean there's a couple of names on the, on, on the panel as well the likes of Donald Burke and uh, Adrian Mullen and uh, to come in as well so they're very strong you know but as as you've mentioned um, it's Watford have, are the ones with the pedigree they're the ones who have the Fitzgibbons under their on their belt over the last 25 years I suppose they've built a strong tradition there and it's, D, it's DCU are the ones that are ch chasing their first but uh, you know on paper uh, if matches are ever won on paper uh, DCU are certainly you know look the strong str strongest uh, side tonight but it'll uh, we'll see it all unfold now over the next 70 minutes or 60 minutes even the breeze is quite strong as we say the conditions very good the sod is excellent here at the DCU sports grounds and it is a sod that is very very busy so that goes to show you how much work is put in around here of course a lot of big games coming up here over the next couple of weeks we can yeah. see Evan Shefflin just practicing his kind of long range uh, diagonal passing there the Ballyhale Sharmocks and Kilkenny man and um yeah, Brian, this will be, I think, a really intriguing encounter. WIT, funnily enough, this is their first time back in the knockout stages for four years. For a college of their standing, that is not a record they'll be particularly happy with. And now that they're here, they'll want to progress. Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned that stat to me uh, there just you know before we went on air. And it's incredible because I suppose when I was playing for Skims, albeit that's a good while ago, WIT were the dominant team. You know, you think back to, I suppose, my own uh, county colleagues, you know, from uh, like say Henry Shefflin and, and Eamon Corcoran, you know, from Tipperary, and uh, they, you know, they had this outstanding team back then. And true to JJ Laney and Brick Walsh and all the guys, you know, they were winning for Skibbins there at one stage, and they were they looked unbeatable. So to go to go so, through such a, a lengthy patch without even getting getting to the quarter final is, is amazing. So um, yeah, they'll they'll be wanting to I suppose to push on and try and get to the weekend, you know, get to the semi-finals. But um, yeah, you mentioned the pitch as well. I remember hurling down the Garda College and down the Mardike and different places and the absolute bogs, you know. So, I mean, it's amazing to see, you know, the quality of the pitches. You know, we see with Carlo IT the last the last night and here tonight that they're they're in fantastic condition for this time of year. This will just be, as David Collins used to call it, a straight up hurling match. As Austin Gleeson watches on, he would love to be out there tonight. WIT would love him uh, to be out there tonight. But uh, because the coaches don't get a whole pile of time to work with these guys, that means that. You know, they don't really have a detailed game plan, so it will just be pretty much a 15 on 15 shootout. Yeah, you would imagine that, um, because if, you know, if you work, if you look down through the teams, there's there's a fair contingent for both sides who have been hurling club. You know, obviously, um, 
But Tommy, the, the Kilkenny cohort, you know, you've got James Berg in there from Conaghy and uh, Tommy Walsh and Evan Shefflin and the Mullinses and that kind of thing. So neither side will have had, a, I suppose, um, a full um, panel to work with. Um, and obviously with the, with the county uh, squads as well, they would have been pulling their players as well. So as you say, it's really, you know, it's getting, getting them together with the Fitzgibbon now the way it's structured. It's, you're trying to get them together for a couple of nights, prepare them, get their heads focused, and then really it's just match day. So... There's not going to be a huge, well, you know, relatively, I suppose, com in comparison to the inter-county scene in terms of tactics, it's, it's going to be, a, yeah, it's going to, uh, hopefully just a kind of a straight hurling match. If you were to judge this on the starting 15 for both teams, you'd have to say that DCU Tokuserin are the favourites, but that's not always what it comes down to in Fitzgibbon Cup hurling or just hurling in general. Hurling in general, but particularly Fitzgibbon Cup, you know, it's, it, as I said, you know, the conditions and this time of year and... Because it tends to be, you know, just you know, straight hurling, it's a great leveller, you know. So, absolutely, you know, on paper, DCU look like they're the strongest squad. But, I mean, more how often have we seen it during the Fitzgibbon campaign? That's what makes the Fitzgibbon so good, is that, you know, it always throws up, you know, it's surprises for want of a better word. And, and you know, it's, it generally comes down to the desire and the hunger of the team, whichever team wants the most, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's all to play for, really, for both sides. And uh, you would... Uh, it, you would, you know, if you, I'm not a bet man, but I'd, you know, if you asked, put my gun to my head, I'd probably say DCU. But at the same time, you would be surprised if, if WOT um, uh, got a result here tonight. Latest from Carlo is IT Carlo 210, NUI Galway 14 points. IT Carlo, just like TCU Dokus Aaron, have reached the final, but they've never won this competition. That's a conversation maybe for another day. It's all about getting to the semi-finals tonight for four colleges and we're about to bring you this one live as Paul O'Dwyer has a slitter in hand and is ready to go. DCU Douglas Aaron in the uh, dark blue and yellow and WIT in the grey and white and it is DCU Douglas Aaron who go on the attack first up. James Bergen just kind of pokes it into the middle looking for the run there of James Burke of Kildare Christy Ring Cup winner his story is amazing James Burke sails that one between the sticks that's a really good strike from James Burke just a couple of months before he won a Christy Ring Cup with Kildare a couple of years ago he was in an induced coma it tells you all you need to know about James Burke he's a resilient guy and he's a good hurler and as you can see there a good hurler a good finisher yeah, and it's good, good play. You know, Damien Reck won the break and ball straight from the throw in, popped it to James Bergen, and uh, James used a hurry to bring it inside and a good score. It looks like DCU have stuck to their 15 named in the programme as Tom Barron of Four Mile Water goes for it from a long way out and gets it. Came off the bench for Waterford against Cork during the week when they won in the National League, and he's just got a really good score for his team, a settling score. Yeah, and a strong local contingent, if you like, from WIT. You know, five to six forwards are from Waterford. So, um, you know, they're. A strong local contingent uh, in, in the forward line for a while. Great score there for DCU. That's a fantastic score. If it keeps going like this, we're going to run out of ink. It was a good strike by John Donnelly from Thomastown in Kilkenny. Looked up, settled himself and just floated at home. Yeah, you can already see, you know, from the outset, the game is pretty open and it's just, you know, both sides going at it. Uh, three scores on the board and barely a minute gone. He was part of the DCU team that lost in the 2018 final against UL. Most of that UL team have gone on to win all Ireland for either Limerick or Tipperary. That is good fighting for the ball by Damien Reck of Wexford. Damien Reck trying to get through a flurry of WIT players. The first real rock of the game. We're going to see an awful lot of that. There's so much strength out there. Ball kind of slips under Ross Smithers, who's another late addition for Waterford. He's from Carlo and going forward is Ryan McBride and it's a free in. Yeah, good work by Ree McBride you know, to come out of the, that rook with the ball. And you can see, you know, three uh, inter-county players. We referenced it in the, the last, the, the, the GMIT, Carroll IT match. The physical strength of, of the players who have conditioned for the, the senior in the county. You know, you've got Evan Shefflin, Damien Reck. Oh, they've gone short. There could be a goal on here. DCU trying to get in behind. Maybe they should have just taken the point, trying to get the shot away. It's Jim Ryan. WIT get back and there's a scramble on. This could go anywhere. And it's into the hand of Tommy Walsh. And the referee says it was handled on the ground and it would be a free out to WIT. And how much might DCU regret not just popping it over for a simple point? Yeah, I mean, it's early. They should have just, you know, I think just got a score on the board. But obviously they were told, you know, if it's on in the early stages, go for it, you know. And I suppose, I think it was, was it uh, Rory O'Connor was the free taker? Rory O'Connor uh, inside yeah, to Jim Ryan. Yeah, I felt there was an opportunity, you know, but... WT were well alert to it and bottled them up. It says an awful lot for Owen Roach that he's given these kind of players the license to do that kind of thing. And when it works, they look brilliant. Lee Gannon of Whitehall, Column Kills sweeping it up for DCU. Coming forward now is John Donnelly. 
and WIT are right in the faces of DCU here. Yeah, yeah, it's competitive. You mean, um, you mentioned, you know, giving the players the, the license to, to play, play and make decisions, and you kind of have to do that. You know, as I said, the, the, the lead up or the preparation beforehand is, is going to be limited. So you're going to have to back your players to, to, to make the right decisions on the pitch. You can't be too prescriptive. Um, but yeah, no, WI are. are Sticking in, although poor silent cut, now that you know, unforced error really needs to be making sure, you know, simple things like that, you know, can hurt you. IT Carlo 312, NUI go with 16 points, the latest score from the second half of the other quarter final going on tonight in Carlo. That is a really good line ball. Who's going to get to it? James Bergen just couldn't sweep it up off the ground, and he was stuck to there by Shaney Smith from Middleton and Cork, but it's won brilliantly by Rhea McBride. WIT with numbers back, Tom Hayes trying to bulldoze out and he wins the free. Good defending by WIT, you know, they're attacking the ball hard, you know, and uh, you had, uh, um, I think it was this Tom Hayes coming out, he took a bit of a knock there, but, um, you know, good aggressive play and you're going to you're gonna have to do that with the, with, with the forwards that uh, DCU have, you know, you can't afford to, to stand back and allow them get the ball in their hands because they will punish you. The breeze not as strong as it was last night for the uh, Sigerson Cup final, but it's still what you call an annoying breeze. Our notes are still blowing all over the place. Ball goes out for a line ball. Yeah, they're look, looking for Gary Cur or Kieran Kerwin there with a the ball into the corner, but well defended by Paddy Smith, you know, I mean, you'd expect him to, to manage that one. Eddie Meany, who got a goal against TU Dublin City Campus in the last game. A bit of a goal-getter supreme, apparently, the De La Salle player. This would be some score if you put it over. He's got the height and elevation, but not the accuracy. Yeah, they're, they're great when they go over, but when they go dead like that, not so much, you know. And Ball launched by Connor Burke. Brilliantly won by Caleb Lyons. It's hard for players to make the ball stick in the hand in these conditions. Trying to get over it there was Ross Smithers. And another free out given. DC are going to have to be careful in the tackle because they've they've given away a few frees inside that WIT 45. Yeah, they have. If they're you know, you're not gonna win if you're not winning the, the breaking ball, you know, which they're not, you know, WIT are, are have won the last couple there. You need to just stand the man up, you know, force him to force him to try and clear the ball under pressure. You know, you're just giving away a silly needless freeze there and giving him the opportunity to drive it 60 yards on the field. Billy Nolan has a long puck as you can see. Stephen Condon, an expert from dead balls. What's he like from play? Let's have a look. He's trying to hang that one up in the breeze. And it's a second wide for WIT. But even when they hit wide, they're being encouraged by the sideline. Yeah, yeah, and it, possibly a bit ambitious. You know, the angle was extremely tight. He might have been better. Could he have played it back across the 21? But look, he fell to, to within his range. And as you say, they're being encouraged to, to take those shots. Jim Ryan is pushed in the back and it's a free in. Yeah, another another silly free by you. I think free it was out, free, yeah, free out. Ree McBride, like I mean, the centre back was going. Um, it was Martin De was going back towards his own end line. No need to foul him. Just force him, as you say, put him under pressure, you know, and turn him over. And Ree McBride getting into Martin De Poer. Scrambling after it was Damien Rick. Damien Reck, who, who of course didn't start the Leinster final because of injury. Yeah, but he's, he's a great player, you know, in loads of pace. And, you know, he's a big player for DCU as well. We cover a lot of ground. James Burke got it away to Evan Shefflin. Great ball. That's a lovely Evan. ball to James Bergen. Two Kilkenny men combining. Bergen fancies this one. That's a really good finish by James Bergen. Yeah, James was, uh, you know, was the marquee for for Connie Shamrocks on their way to the um, to the Junior All Ireland final. You know, he's a he's a really good hurler. You know, it's well able to take his score. You know, if he gets enough ball, he will cause problems in there. And yeah. it's a great ball out of Evan Shefflin to find him. He absolutely will cause problems. Billy Nolan. They need to be careful here. Caleb Lyons taking his man on. He'll pick up to Robbie Flynn. We've seen this from Caleb there for Watford over the, the last year or two, you know, and even at the weekends, those range and runs up the wing. And that will tell you how good the sod is, the fact that he was able to execute the bounce skill on the run. The shot gets away from Stephen Condon, but the referee had blown the whistle, and it's a free into WIT, yeah. and being spoken to is Evan Shefflin. And he's, you know, I suppose they're, they're a bit fortunate as well, because I felt uh, Stephen Condon, he seemed, unless he thought that he knew the free, the advantage was coming, he seemed to take an age to strike that ball, and he got half blocked, but great run by, uh, by Caleb Lyons, you know, he's a... He's a 
he's a strong running wing back. You know, he's strong in the air. He's aggressive. He's abrasive. You know, and uh, um, again, with the absence of Austin Gleeson, he'll be the player you'll be looking for. Father Dwyer having a word with uh, one of the DCU back room. Tells him to just walk away. No, that's it, boy. Well done. So Stephen Condit. And down here as well, ref. Yeah, when you get a chance. Looking for a first point from a dead ball for WIT. Has he pulled that one a little bit, or is it drawing in? It's drawing in. It's good, Stephen Condon of Glanworth with his first score at seven against Mary I. 23 points so far in the competition. Well, 24 now, including that one. Yeah, you can see DCU, what their wing foot half forward line are doing. They're clustering together around the centre forward spot and then breaking left and right. Reed McBride made a break out to the left half forward position. The ball just didn't fall for him. Rory O'Connor trying to run onto this one. It's chipped down the line by James Burke. WIT defending it well. Falls the way of Robbie Flynn. WIT against a fairly stiff breeze. And that's a throw ball and a free in for DCU, and that's frustrating for WIT. Yeah, we're we were talking about silly freeze, you know, from DCU inside, you know, just giving away any of this freeze. There's I suppose two mistakes from WIT. Of course I then caught earlier and then just not executing the hand pass right in front of the referee. Really, you left you left him no no choice but to, to blow that one. Here's Rory O'Connor. Let's this one go. And over it goes. So Connor gets his first. WIT have to hang on in there in this game. They can't let DCU get a run. Robbie Flynn looking to atone for the error of giving away that free. Offloads it really well in the tackle to Caleb Lyons, who earns the free. He's such a strong runner, as you were saying, Brian. Yeah, he is, and he's direct, you know. He, he's, he's looking to go straight the whole time, you know, and uh, that's causing causing the, the opposition defence to, uh, you know, to, uh, he's asking them questions, you know, what, what do you do? Do you stand them up? Do you, do you foul them? And in this case, they fouled them. You know, and look, he's already, he's straight away, he's onto it, looking for a quick ball. And fumbles it. <coughs> Goes for it himself. Great score, oh, great that score. is lovely. Or is it? Oh, he was unlucky. Oshin Foley of uh, Cross of Yog Ballymurn. Launched by John Donnelly. Jim Ryan sends it over. Too easy for DCU. Good score. It was um, cute. It might have been, I think WOT were claiming as a push in the back um, on Kevin Hassett, but Jim Marine got away with it and uh, good score. Jim Ryan of Fuhrer in Stieg. That's a super catch by Connor Burke. Oh, it's a fumble from Billy Nolan, but he just about gets away for, for, uh, with it. James Bergen was on top of him. But he, in the end, deals with it quite well. Robbie Flynn has a look up to see what's there. Plenty of movement in the forward line. He's just gone with a direct, and it's two on two. And it's brilliantly won by Lee Gannon. Bit of a height mismatch between Gannon and Condon. DCU away again. James Bergen in plenty of space. Ryan is inside. Bergen might go himself. Just scoops it over. Lovely little finish. Good score by James Bergen. I think uh, was it Tom Hayes just slipped on the way out, tracking him out for the, the ball and uh, left James Bergen with loads of time to, uh, to compose himself and put it over the bar. WIT need to stop the rot here. Every time they've ran it, they've won a free or created a chance. Every time they've gone long, DCU have defended it well. Floods a little bit over the top on Conor Burke. Rory O'Connor is back a long way. Flood giving away the free, colliding with Burke there. He does have the breeze at his back, but it would still be a mighty score if he was to get it. And it's yeah, wide and well wide. Yeah, he had the range, but I think he was reaching the whole time. He just pulled it to the left and wide. But um, you're just watching the the puckouts for uh, for WIT. And they're tending to play an orthodox, you know, just 
a holding her positions pretty much and putting it down on top of him, backing the guys to try and win it, which he did in this case with a great catch by Flood. Willie, Willie Flood. Yeah. Flood with a great catch and he was held up and it's a free in. And uh, Mikey Dakin already warming up for WIT. Yeah, great, great catch by, um, I think I call him Willie Flood. I mean, the Conan Flood, um, as I said to you before the match, you know, he's a guy who's been blighted by injuries and we're was looking forward to kind of seeing him this evening. He's heard some good stuff about him, you know, down in Wexford and uh, he's been around the senior squad for the last year or so. Stephen Condon does the necessary, gets his second score of the game and there's just three between them. Just one between them and Carlo. Uh, it's IT Carlo 312, NUI Galway 20 points. There's a sub coming in here for Watford. Dakin is coming in. Coming in for uh, James Berrigan. And uh, yeah, I think it's Tom Hayes. He's not happy. <laughs> yeah, well, off. you wouldn't be 14 minutes into a match, no. would you? Players have pride, and that's understandable. They work hard to get out there in the first place. They work hard to get into the team, and when they're taken off after 15 minutes, I imagine they feel hard done by. Caleb Lyons guides it back to Billy Nolan, who winds up. To get there, tries to pick out Tom Barron. Barron breaks it, but only to a DCU man, and that man is Rory O'Connor. Dara Gray running through a gauntlet and losing it. Flood. Oh, that's a misguided pass. It almost fell to Condon. But just getting a hurry in there was Brian Ryan. Yeah, he read it well. I think Flood possibly telegraphed it a bit. And then... Condon goes to ground, free in. Putting him to ground was uh, Dara Gray, I think. Yeah, Rory, Rory O'Connor has a license. We'll just see it here again. A great pickup. He's going through a you know, needless slap down with the hurl from uh, Gannon, Gannon and Gray. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah they were yeah. both clumsy enough there. Again, uh, you know, again, as soon as there's a bit of pressure coming on, neither end of the backs, you know, they're, they're giving away some needless frees. You know, I mean, just there's enough bodies behind, around them there. Back yourself and, and try and, you know, Wait for him to pop the ball up. Stephen Condon with his third. You see Rory O'Connor, you know, we're talking about as a danger man for DCU in the inside line. He seems to have a kind of a bit of a free roll. He's out around the middle of the field looking for a loose ball. Number, number two is, uh, is tracking him. Uh, Tom. It's going to be swept up by Martin Defoyer. Well, he was trying to sweep it up, but it's very hard when a whole pile of bodies comes in on top of you. Defoyer again. Really strong stuff from Defoyer. Yeah, sorry, I think Free it's... in for DCU. I think we said Tom Hayes had gone off. It's actually um, it's Tom Hayes who's tracking Rory O'Connor on the pitch, and it's number four, Sina Smith, who, from Middleton, who's, who's substituted. And that's, that's hard on him, the county finalist with Middleton last season. He played underage with Cork as well. Here's Rory O'Connor. O'Connor from a tight angle. Good score. Great point. Yeah, we mentioned, I think, in the last match, myself and yourself, Oshin, we're working on when the importance of a good free taker, and I suppose at any level, but particularly in Fitzgibbon conditions, you know, you can get it this time of year. Rory O'Connor's been imperious so far. Evan Shefflin pickpockets his man, gets it out to James Burke. Good block down from Jack Prendergast. Burke on it again. Connor Burke. Connor Burke. It's going to drop inside Billy Nolan. Really cool under pressure. We saw the same in the football last night. Evan Comerford getting up and dealing with an awkward one like that. That was great work from Billy Nolan. Yeah, good goalkeeping. You know, his confidence. You know, James Bergen putting pressure on him there. Caught the ball. You know, worked it out. Fair to say, DCU will be frustrated to not be more in front. Yeah, it's been. Condit just loses it, trying to sweep it up now, Robbie Flynn. WT have been hanging in there, you know, they've been making life difficult for w DCU, who, you know, DCU will look the more dangerous side, certainly, but, uh, you know, WT have made it difficult for him so far and uh, are hanging in there. That is some scramble. And WIT have it, and it's Kieran Kerwin. Kerwin inside to Meany. Meany, can he finish? Meany trying to untangle himself. Meany gets the penalty. penalty. Well, we said he was a goal getter. Maybe he's a goal creator for now, but either way, it'll do for WIT. Yeah, I'd like to see that now. 
see it in the replay to see, you know, was it a foul? Did, was it just good defending it? Bodies around him or, was, or were they pulling? And here we go. There's not much. I didn't see too much wrong with that. You know, I mean... It was the yeah. octopus tackle that you see in Gaelic football more than hurling, well, but I don't think there was anything over the top, was well, Foley came out and stood his ground at the goalie, as he's entitled to, you know, and made himself big. He wasn't going to get out of the way, I mean, and then the rest of the bodies came around him, so I felt the chance was gone, you know. You could have easily been blown for overcarrying at that point, so. Well, speaking of goalkeepers, it is keeper on keeper here, Billy Nolan up against Oshin Foley. A goal would be a massive boost to WIT. This would be a huge score now if they can get it. Nolan. Yeah. Wonderful finish, WIT draw level. Yeah, so as, as we mentioned, you know, WIT are, are hanging in there, you know, and uh, making life difficult. Now all of a sudden it's a, it's a level, level game. Billy Nolan runs back to between the sticks with a smile on his face. Oshin Foley launches it long. What's DCU's response? Running after it, Jim Ryan. Ryan who had a goal chance himself earlier in the half. Good take from Tom Barron. All goes loose again. Hanging on to possession is impossible here. DCU turned it over wonderfully, going to ground Damien Rick. But it's a case of overcarrying and a free out. Yeah, um, again, my initial thoughts were Damien Rick was pulled back as he went, tried to go around the WT player. Might see it in the replay again, but. Here we go. He goes around. Yeah, look, pull around the waist, two arms around him. I mean, I think I, I'd argue it's a free in if, uh, rather than a free out. But Billy Noland, is he going to do an end of roll and score from his own 45? No, he's not. He's just playing a diagonal. Eddie Meany looking for it again, leaves it off to his teammate. Well defended by Paddy Smith. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Kieran Kerwin couldn't get it into the hand. Here comes Evan Shefflin. Flood does brilliantly again. No, he doesn't. He gives away a free. Yeah, Evelyn was, was, was lucky, you know, he possibly had taken too much out of it, was gone to a cul-de-sac. But uh, shoulder to the, to the chest and free out. They're playing extra time in uh, Carlo. It finished after normal time. IT Carlo 3.13, NUI goal with 22 points. The highlights of that game will be available to the Electric Ireland social media channels. Watch the runner, watch the runner, watch the Evan Shefflin. No. Well, let's have a look at the penalty incident. Well, the actual goal itself, brilliant. Great finish from Billy Nolan. Really good play from Jack Prendergast. Caleb Lines. Looked like he was going to drop it into the full forward line. Fooled everyone, including his own teammates. Brian Ryan steams forward. John Donnelly. Shoot was the shout at Donnelly. And why not? That's straight over the black spot. Good score, his second of the game. Yeah, you pop a ball to John Donnelly in that range. He's he's gonna he's not gonna miss, you know. He's a uh, great pair of hands on him, you know, he's accurate left to right. But uh, good work, good work by the DCU half back line. They've been pretty solid, you know. Um, Connor Burke has cleared some good ball and Evan Shefflin obviously and just Brian Ryan came out with that one there for John Donnelly. What a catch that was from Eddie Meany, who wins the free. It's all very tight at the moment, nip and tuck, you know, DCU just get a point, come back down and uh, a response straight away from WIT. Well, the standard has been set by the other quarterfinals this weekend. Mary I against UL, a bit of a belter by all accounts. IT Carlo against NUI Galway, quite good. And uh, UCC against UCD, decent, although UCC were comfortable-ish winners in the end. Stephen Condon makes it a little more uncomfortable for DCU. Douglas Aaron with his fourth, and we're all square again. So you can see the DCU half hour line, look, they're bunched together in the centre and they'll, they'll break left and right. Goal decided to go straight down the middle, top of Reen McBride. Foley with the breeze at his back. WIT tried to sweep it up and can't. Trying to get it was Jim Ryan, now it's into the path of Damien Reck. Damien Reck to James Burke. Burke goes outside. Sometimes you have to go out to go back in. Brian Ryan from South Liberties in Limerick. Yeah. Gets a wondrous point. It was well worked. You know, the, the, the goal decided to go down the middle. They won the ball, worked it back out uh, through James Burke and Brian, 
and uh, Brian Ryan popped it over the bar. So good score. James Burke, such a brilliant link player. He's a good finisher as well. Off the stick of Prendergast it goes. Lovely pass out of trouble. De Poyer. Meany is in there, as is Kerwin. Kerwin trying to bulldoze his way around. Held it up really well there. Condon. Tom Hayes, the cornerback down in corner forward position. He's tracking Rory O'Connor and he's popped up in an unfamiliar position for him. And the free's been given away, this is yeah. why. Not sure what that was. There's been a few calls that harsh. one might call 50-50 so far in this game, Brian. Yeah, well, they blew against him. The tackling player had no hurl in his hand. I wasn't sure what the hell that was for, but... Carry is the shout at Robbie Flynn. A surging burst out of defence from Tommy Walsh. Kerwin tries to get the flick. Condon tries to get the pull, but it's well defended by Paddy Smith. Really good full back play. Might come out here to Flood. Flood does not give up on that one. Flood! He worked really hard to create the chance and he's so unlucky that he doesn't nail it. Yeah, that's a bad miss. I mean, he'd done the hard work, won back possession, got himself into a bit of space. You know, he should really be putting it over from, from that distance. Burke. He's just got a lovely strike of a ball, Burke, and WIT are punished for their miss. And that's the difference, you know, straight up the other end, and Burke gets a bit of space and from probably a harder angle on the out, outside, or on the right side, right wing, with his right side and over the bar. Two between them, five to go in the first half. A really entertaining game so far. Get over! An attempt at double in the air, but it's Connor Burke who takes it. Jim Ryan looked to me like he was pushed in the back by Kevin Hassett, the referee allows play to continue. Hassett, of course, the WIT captain. Now he's going to just hop this one. I think it's six one half to the other between the two of them. They've been pushing, shoving each other there for the last since the beginning of the match. Anytime ball went in, but he's done well. He's kind of held the centre there, the full forward position for DCU. Jack Prendergast. Sent down the line by De Poer. Poor clearance straight down on top of Burke. Connor Burke. Damien Rick. It's one on one inside, but there's too much on that one, and it gets away from Bergen, and he was held up relatively well there by uh, Dakin, who had a little nibble off him there as the uh, keeper stole away. Three on three inside. Condon can't get to it, can Meany. Away it goes from Ryan. Bergen just lets it slip, but might get it on the second attempt, or at least get it to one of his teammates. He does. This is Ryan McBride. Great score. Fantastic score. Another one who was there last year, Ryan McBride, as DCU dug us here and got to the semi-final. Lovely point. Jack, um, Jack Prendergast is, is, you know, he's... A, like out centre forward, he's come out to the left wing and he's kind of trying to float in space and they've picked him out with three puck outs already and Conor Burke is holding his position as centre back, he's not following him so... Hey, 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 hey. There's here, while Jack has got on a good bit of ball, Conor has cleared a bit of ball as well so it's... It's kind of probably negated each other really, cancel each other out at this stage. Ryan Ryan winning the free for DCU Doka Serrin. And Rory O'Connor has come all the way back to strike it. Again, they're going for a short one to James Bergen. James Bergen hooked brilliantly. He kind of telegraphed what he was going to do, but it falls into the path of McBride. However, he can't take advantage. Gets away from Burke. The referee has stopped play. And we'll go back. And we'll go back. So that play counts for nothing. Good quick free again from Rory O'Connor. Here's Bergen. 
He does it again. WIT asleep at the back. Bergen gets his third. Yeah, and whether Rory's been told or it's just been a decision he's made, but he's been very alert to any freeze he's got. If there's a ch half a chance on, we've seen it at the very in the first minute. You know, he's he's not afraid to take a quick free, and, and if there's a scoring chance on. I'm not sure if it's a stat that means anything in modern hurling, but all six starting forwards for DCU Dokusarin have now scored. Bergen had scored two before that. Here is Damien Reck. Can WIT find a point or two before half time? Jack Prendergast on the chase, but Connor Burke beats him to him. B Prendergast then loses it. No, he doesn't. No, Burke got the final touch Connor and it's got, a line yeah, ball. Got a flick to it, yeah, put it over the line. Probably should have got it first time, but he recovered well. The sideline cut now for WIT. Stephen Condon. Will he go for it? No, he won't. DC, you have to be careful here. And our Brian Ryan, good work, gets away from Flood, pops it up to Evan Shefflin. Shefflin to the overlapping runner, Rory O'Connor. Rory O'Connor looking for Jim Ryan, doesn't find him, but it does fall away of another DCU forward. Turning and twisting is John Donnelly. Donnelly inside. Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan gets his second. Really good play from DCU, moved the yeah. ball very quickly. Yeah, worked it really well, in fairness, you know, delivered a good ball from the back into, into the corner. Um, John Donnelly got it, you know, worked it to Damien Reck and played it back out for a good score from Jim Ryan. A yellow card coming for Kevin Hassett. Yeah, late, late, late tackle after the ball was, was gone. Well, since the goal, WIT have done very, very little. They've only scored one point. Well, uh, DCU have added six. Connor Burke tries to find James Burke, but instead it's intercepted by Ross Smithers. Dupuyer blocked off by Connor Furman. And the Wexford man goes all the way. Not quite. Oh! Billy Nolan, is it a good oh. save? Is it a fumble? I'm not sure what you call it, but either way, it's not I a didn't goal. Know, I didn't know too much about that. We'll see it again. Did it come back in off the crossbar? Well, another shaky incident for WIT at the back. Yeah, back off the crossbar. And, oh. Very unlucky for John Donnelly. He went sliding in after it. If he got anything on it, not just yeah, that he's hurly, even if his knees had got to it, he probably would have got the goal, but... Uh, Say Billy Nolan just did just bear, just enough to keep it out. Here's Rory O'Connor, who this time just takes a straightforward shot at goal. Good and score. why not? His third of the game, all from freeze. And that's the half-time whistle, and it is DCU who have a comfortable lead, 14 points to 1-5, Brian, and I think it's fair to say that they are worth it. Yeah, they are enough for sure. I mean, they've they've done, I suppose, they've looked the most threatening um, of the two sides. Um, anytime the ball has gone into the inside forward, I know WT have the goal, but, uh, but it's from a penalty and a dubious penalty, you could say, at that as well. DCU have been the more threatening side. You know, they definitely, we've spoken about before the match, the, the forwards they have, there's a little bit more, I suppose, finesse, a little bit more class about them, you know, and even though Rory O'Connor has played a fair bit of the hurl in the first half out the field, you know, the likes of Jim Ryan has held the line well up front with James Burke and floating off and John Donnelly, you know, and Reem McBride and James Burke in the half hour line, you know, popped in. So, as you mentioned, all six forwards have scored. Is that a stat you pay much attention to? Well, I'd certainly rather have my six forwards all on the score sheet than not. Um, you know, and the threat is coming from, you know, across the board on the field. Well, it is half time in the DCU sports grounds in the Electric Carlin Fitzgibbon Cup quarter final. DCU Docus Heron leading 14 points to 1 5. There were some very decent scores in that opening 30 minutes. So let's have a look at them. Yeah, I think this is. Um this is James Burke's score. Uh, you mentioned you referenced him during the first half from Kildare, and he's had his, his challenges. John Donnelly, great score from out in the wing. We've seen him do it for Kilkenny in the last few years. You know, um, you know another another player well capable of scoring if he's given space. James Bergen, you know, has had a great year for his club, Connie Shamrocks, and he's brought that into the match this evening for DCU as well. He's been a danger, uh, danger, danger man for him all evening. Then you can see, it's even yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he's been one of the more lively forwards for WT. They've, they've looked to try and get the ball into his corner. He's been good from freeze. And obviously Rory O'Connor, who's the probably a marquee forward for DCU. You know, he's been excellent from freeze for DCU. Um, Jim Ryan, probably one of the lesser known forwards for pitching in with a couple of points. And again, James Bergen, you know, showing out in front. I mean, I suppose it's a, a statement uh, that 
WHE took the man that was marking him off after what was it? You know, 14 minutes. 14 minutes, you know. Um, they felt that was the danger where the danger was coming from. Again, you can see a lot of the scores from WHE coming from, from Freeze, from Stephen Condon, and, and again, Rory O'Connor doing, you know, as he'd want from a free taker, he's been, you know. So this is the assistant. penalty incident. It went inside. Yeah, I mean, look. I don't see a penalty there, to be honest. I mean, it's good good goalkeeping by Oshin Foley. He came off his line, stood up, stood him up. And uh, look, he took the, the goal. You know, Billy Nolan took the penalty well, but I, I, I couldn't. I don't think that was a penalty. I think it was good defending. Oshin um, got back, stood him up, and then the defenders got in around him. I mean, he was boxed in. He, he was going to be blown for overcarrying. I think Paul was quick to, to give it a penalty. And then, you know, DCU responded well, worked the ball out, and again, John Donnelly just popping it over the bar. You know, and after you, that penalty, DC really took over. It did, yeah. And you can see from the clips, from the points here, that most of the, you know, a lot of DCU scores are coming from, from play, from well-worked scores, where they've got the ball in quick and then recycled it to guys in space. You know, and again, Reed McBride coming in off the, his, you know, his weaker side and popping it over the bar. Again, a quick free from Rory McCarthy to James Berrigan, you know, who found himself in acres of space and over the bar. Whereas DC, you know, WT have found it more more difficult to get those scores and relied on I suppose place walls. Well WIT struggling at half time or certainly for the end of the first half. They really need to get back into it early in the second half, Brian. Um I guess the way to do that is to run at DCU. That's where they got the most success in the first half. So you know it's easy to say that. Can they do that? They can. I mean we we've mentioned it how I suppose probably both sets of defenders, but certainly, you know, for, for DCU they when they've been, when WT have run at them, they've drawn the free, you know, defenders have, have tended to panic rather than back themselves and, and you know they've they've given away needless frees and we've seen it particularly with Caleb Lyons there, who's you know, a strong runner from wing back, you know, he's come down the wing here a couple of times and whether he's drawn men into him and popped the ball off to a guy in space or he's drawn the, the free himself, they probably they need a bit more of that from across the rest of the field, you know, and try and I suppose ask the questions to DCU because at the moment moments DC are doing enough and look comfortable enough in terms of this, the way they're, they're playing and you know they're not getting a huge amount of change out of delivering balls long and on top of the likes of Paddy Smith and Connor Burke so they need to probably look at you know as you say you know, bringing runners from deep and, and asking those sort of questions. For now Brian thank you very much uh, DCU cruising in this game but uh, WIT have shown sparks throughout and they need to show a few more to get back into it. At the break it is DCU Doker Saren 14 points at WIT 1-5, we'll be back with the second half soon, so stay with us.
Or oh, we've got a busy couple of weeks coming up in the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup. Mary Immaculate College against IT Carlo or NUIG on here on Saturday, February 8th. DCU Docus Aaron or Waterford Institute of Technology taking on the holders UCC here on the same weekend on what will be a festival of uh, higher education championship Gaelic games. IT Carlo and NUIG, by the way, still in extra time. And Carlo, we'll let you know uh, the final score when it does come in. And don't forget, you'll be able to watch highlights of that game across the Electric Ireland social media channels and, of course, the uh, GA Higher Education social media cha channels. Uh, WIT need a few more highlights in the second half. Condon has been keeping them in it along with Billy Nolan. Uh, for DCU, Docus Aaron, well, their forwards have been very good. John Donnelly, Ria McBride, James Burke, James Bergen and Jim Ryan all popping up with scores from play. Uh, Brian Ryan getting one from wing back as well and of course Rory O'Connor nailing his freeze Brian Hogan formerly of Kilkenny in UCD uh, you could argue that DCU probably should be more ahead yeah I mean you know we've, we've spoken about the penalty already you know you take that out of it I mean you, you know you've got six scores versus 14 you can see the spread of scores scores coming from DCU side um, and that goal arguably you know was you know contentious decision so you know, for sure, DC were probably, um, you know, could argue they should be more ahead. Um, but look, that gives WIT hope. You know, they've gone in at half time and uh, regrouped. And, you know, I'm sure they'll come out in the second half looking for for a big push. Um, but, you know, they're, go they're going to have to, we spoke about, they're going to have to come up with something different. They're going to have to run at them. Um, because what they're, what they're doing at the moment isn't really causing a huge amount of tr troubles for DCU. Interestingly enough for WIT, they actually didn't go in at halftime. DCU did, WIT didn't. They'd love to have that man for the second half, Ozzy Gleeson. He's out to injury. For sure. I mean, you know, what an addition he, he would be. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, it's a fair trek across the dressing rooms, um, you know, and they probably made a decision that the time they would waste walking across there, better utilise trying to regroup them and get the guys focused for the second half, you know, whereas I suppose DCU with the lead just wanted to take that breather and, 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 you know, stick to, I suppose, what they've been doing before, which is regroup the dressing room and now they're coming back out they've made WT I suppose wait a, a couple of minutes there in the cold well as you could see as DCU came out this is a busy complex this is a really really great facility that DCU have it's not just utilized, used by DCU of course Dublin do an awful lot of work here uh, will a Dublin College be progressing to the semi-finals we'll find out over the next 30 minutes or maybe more remember this has to end on the night a bit of a swirling breeze it is at the back of WIT in this second half will that make any difference i don't i mean i don't i don't want to see it making a massive difference i think you know wit need to kind of start and pose themselves a bit more m running with the ball a little bit more you know asking questions at dcu you know, the danger is that dcu if they get one or two early scores with the bench they have they could run away with this match early on so so wit need to get a couple of scores on the board early adrian mullen donald burke darren mullen sean curry among those on the bench Virgil whiteley as well you know Virgil whiteley that's right yeah my own club mate wit go long they need a good start to the second half Kerwin can he at least win a free he's lost his hurley he has won a free and that is what WIT did well on occasion in the first half they ran at DCU yeah. that's when they caused them problems yeah exactly you know they got a good ball in you know and uh, you know I think it was uh, Conor Kerwin you know won the ball and you know take them on turn turn and face stand them up and uh, as you said you know there's been a few needless frees given away and uh, that's what they need to do more of you know with, if most of their scores in the first half come from place balls and there's a reason for that when they have managed to win possession inside and run at DCU, they've caused problems. Stephen Condon with his fifth of the game. They've all come from freeze. He's a player who can do damage from play as well. Foley goes shortish to Connor Furman, who's under real pressure, but wins the free out. Yeah, I mean, you know, the sharp hook out, um, WT did well to box him in. They had him under pressure. You know, again, why give away a needless free? Just you know, you don't know what will happen. You turn them over in a dangerous position, anything can happen. Furman, of course, of St. Martins, the Wexford County champions, trying to drive on as James Burke just wouldn't quite sit up for the nice man. Unusual hand pass by Caleb Lines, but it does have the desired effect. Tom Barron gets a bit of a bounce of the ball, then runs into a DCU crowd. Connor Burke looked like he touched the ball on the ground there. There was cause for a free. He got away with it. And this will make WIT feel sick because they feel it should have been a free in, but instead it's a free out and probably or possibly here. a card for Condon. Let's Conor have Burke. a look. It didn't come up. Yeah, he definitely got a hand to it on the ground. And again, you know, a needless slap with the hurl across the chest and here, allowed DCU to clear the ball now 60, 70 yards up the field. Glamworth, Stephen Condon getting a yellow card. 
It won't be a launch here by Conor Burke. Well, it will in the end. Launch-ish. He actually could have drained a bit more out of that if he wanted to, but whatever they were trying to work, it didn't work out. Good ball into the hand of Robbie Flynn, who is completely bottled up and turned over, and Rory O'Connor wants it, but he might need to get it. And as it's floated it's over by John Donnelly. Donnelly. Yeah, and I, that's, I suppose that's the difference, really. You know, they turn him over and just, you know, quick flick of the wrist over the bar. Looks so simple, you know, when it's... We could see it last night in the football. IT Carlo, strength-wise, just couldn't match DCU, and it did matter towards the end of that game. But Stephen Condon pops up and squirts one over. He's first from play. Yeah, but he's been dangerous all night. You know, in fairness to him, he's been he's worked really hard. You know, and he's he's he's, he's been very good from his frees, and he deserve he probably deserves that point. Tommy Walsh. Couldn't get it into his hand. His teammate does collect it. That's Jim Prendergast, Jim, uh, Jack Prendergast. Martin Depoyer. Tom Barron. Get over is the call from the sideline. Score. And it does get over. Tom Barron. Good point. His second of the game. Yeah, that's a great score from Tom Barron. You know, that's what you need. You know, we need we need a few more of the players. Uh, chipping in with scores for, for WIT and not be as reliant on Stephen Condon. And this is where I completely double back on my own point. Yes, DC are stronger and sometimes that does count for an awful lot. But WIT are light and fast and can move the ball around. Rory O'Connor couldn't keep it in hand, but Bergen does get it. Gives it off to McBride, who steps inside and puts it over. Great score and just before that, you know, it was a good diagonal ball played in and Rory O'Connor nearly got onto his first time and he's, he's playing for, you know, more inside his inside line now in the second half. It didn't come up, but they recycled it, got it back out to Ree McBride and a great score. So much goes through Rory O'Connor. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned in the first half, he had licence to come out the field and get onto the ball, pushing the back there from Evan Shefflin is fairly blatant in front of the ref. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the inside line, that's where he's going dangerous and that's where the threat for goal is. And it's moved forward because Evan Shefflin didn't back away as the free was struck. WIT tried to take it quickly. There was runners in behind and maybe they sniffed a goal chance, but they'll probably settle for the point here. Yeah, that's what you call, I suppose, a good free. I mean, he'd already given away the free at that stage. It was probably a point. No point letting him take a quick one. Condon puts it over. Four points in it. Quick free to Ree McBride here. He's finding himself in space. Here is McBride. Spraying it is Brian Ryan. That's a fantastic take. Wonderful take by James Burke. Now it's Jim Ryan. Rory O'Connor. O'Connor goes back out to Burke. Burke on the bunker side to Dara Gray. Dara Gray from a tight angle while falling away from goal. Hits a wide. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's an argument there for Jim Ryan just to pop the ball over himself. You know, he threw a, you could argue, was it a hand pass into Rory O'Connor? But it was a great catch, you know, James, uh, J uh, James, James Burke. Burke yep. Yeah, it was a great catch. You know, he's, he's played well today. DCU getting on top again. John Donnelly dropping inside his own half. James Bergen. Stuck to by Mikey Whelan of Carrick Davins in Tipperary. Bit of a blind hand pass. Intercepted brilliantly by Ross Smithers. Trying to run onto it as Caleb Lyons. We know he can move with the ball on the stick. Lyons. Uh, he's going to pull it to the right, I think. Yeah. A bad wide, near side and wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they'll always tell you, the coaches always tell you, if you're going to put a wide, put it across the face of the goal at least, you know. But, uh, yeah, he had the distance, but again, just pull it to the near post and wide. Again, looking for a quick puck out to Ree McBride here. Well defended. Flood. Prendergast. Has to be careful here. Puts it on the hurley. Scoop forward. Good ball. Batted away from Tom Barron. Tries to get it on the second attempt and does. Slipped inside. Tom Hayes. Hayes wins a free in. 
Yeah, and ran at them, you know, we mentioned it, you know, they got the ball, they've strong running, you know, Jack Prendergast up the wing, popped the ball off, and then it had Hayes there, again, running at Rory O'Connor. I suppose Rory defending wouldn't be, you know, natural to him, and, uh, you know, ended up tackling him up high, head high, and the ref was playing advantage, you know, so another opportunity now for another point for WIT and for Stephen Condon. Well, at halftime and before the game, you didn't just get the treat of hearing Brian Hogan, you got to see him as well. And there's a few questions coming in on social. <laughs> the answer is yes, we are broadcasting from Brian's Garden Shed. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Condon. Hello, Stevie. Stevie. Puts that one over wonderfully. Four in the second half alone for Stephen Come on Condon. Again, now. Come on again. Push up on the hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. There were some who didn't think this game would be close. It would probably be a bit closer if Austin Gleeson was playing. Tommy Walsh with a crossfielder. Trying to dig it up into the hand of Stephen Condon again. It's a free out. And I don't think the WIT management are too happy. Lee Gannon stood his ground and did what he needed to do. He's a big unit, Lee Gannon. Yeah, he did well. He was you know, strong over the ball there. Tommy Walsh played a good crossfield ball, opened the play up. But he, uh, he did well, you know. He was isolated on, on his man in space, used his strengths and won a free. It'll be Foley against Fanning for the number one spot in Wexford this year. Great hit by Killam. Killam lines and uh, took a tap across the side of the head for his troubles. Nice turn by Tom Barron. Runs into a spot of bother, tries to get it away, does really well to get it to Hayes, but Hayes was pounced on, and now it's Dara Gray. Rory O'Connor, it's intercepted. And that should be a free, but the referee allows play to continue. Connell Flood, and that is a free. There was two or three incidents there that the WIT management team weren't happy with. They did eventually get the free, and now they have the chance to reduce the arrears to two. Yeah, and again, it's, you know, strong run. Dara Gray, you know, poor clearance, there wasn't enough pace on it, left it hanging there, you know, to be intercepted by WIT, and then Flood got on the ball, you know, in plenty of paces, as we mentioned, and won the free. And again, you know, they're uh, they're hanging in there, you know, with those frees, you know, they're, they're instead of when they're getting a chance to run at DCU and, and just keeping them in the game. Stephen Condon puts that one over, and it's a two point game, and DCU haven't really got into it in the second half. No, and, you know, uh, as I'm sure the management, you know, after the match, if, if if they do come on the right side, they'll have to ask questions about the, the amount of freeze and needless freeze they're giving away, you know, just pulling and, and slapping with the hurl. Great catch there from... Uh, Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan, yeah. Out in front is James Bergen, gets the turn. Dangerous here. James Bergen in. James Bergen, good oh, save. Great save. James Bergen probably... will be disappointed, but Nolan showed reactions yeah. like a cat there. James as well to, to win the ball and turn. Showed a good turn of pace, but probably didn't get the connection on it he wanted. Tom Barron trying to roll it down the park. The crowd getting up close and personal. It's one of the great things about Fitzgibbon Cup hurling, how close you actually get to the action. Connor Burke gives it to Furman. He's in plenty of space there score. as he launches the shot. A super score. Oh, that is magnificent. Yeah, well worked out. I think it was Connor Burke, and uh, was it? we'll see now in the replay who is, but a great delivery into John Donnelly then, and John popped it over the bar. John Donnelly, second of the second half. DCU will want to see more of that. Well caught. Lee Gannon again. Gannon, yeah. There seems to be an increase That's in free. intensity for DCU. Colonel Flood gives away the free as Brian Ryan makes his way out of defence. Yeah, a hurl up around the neck again. He can't have any complaints. A strong play from uh, DCU backs and Lee Gannon with a good catch. And Brian Ryan, Brian, Ryan, Brian Ryan coming out of the den, you know. Strong looking player. DJ Carey was goal hungry when he when he played his team are goal hungry tonight. They've scored 5-17 against NUIG. NUIG 27 points. So it looks like IT Carlo are going through to the semi-finals. They're in the second half of extra time there, and it is 5-17 IT Carlo, 27 points. NUI Galway. Furman. Just a touch out of John Donnelly inside. Picks James out Burke. Burke. His touch is good. Burke to Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan planted the feet and stuck it over. DCU are cooking again. 
Yeah, there was a great there was a great run by uh, Connor Furman through the middle there, and James Burke just I suppose his first touch just let him down a bit, and uh, he popped it back outside to uh, Jim Ryan. But on the other side, Connor Furman made a great run if you if you'd seen him. WIT need goals. I know they're only four behind, but they've never looked like kind of closing the gap any further than maybe three. Connor Burke. Bringing McBride. McBride outside. Fergal Whiteley in for DCU. Here's James Bergen. It's wide. Lucky for WIT because DCU are starting to pull away here. And they win primary possession again and storm up the field again. And it's Brian Ryan. Ryan has got Burke inside. Burke will go for it himself. That's a great score. WIT through Billy Nolan tried to play a quick puck out and uh, it was miscontrolled and broke to Brian Ryan. Or Brian Ryan and a strong run from Brian up, up through the middle and popped it to James Burke. And great score. Third point for Burke. Jack Prendergast all on his own. Yeah, like he did in the first half. He's dropping deep, looking for looking for balls. Kerwin's trying to get in under this, but he was held up really well by Paddy Smith. Yeah, a bit of a waste. He dropped deep, you know, looking for the ball as he did in the first half. And, you know, he had time and space and a bit of a waste. DCU bench. That's a fetching polo neck. Adrian Mullen is standing and he doesn't look like a man who's going to come out. He's, he's had a, a, a tough time of late with the, I suppose, the amount of big time games he has played for Ballyhale Shamrocks. I know that there are other players who've been involved in the club playing, but Burke will run on to this one. Running off him inside is Rec. Oh. Bergen. Great save, great save. Or did it go behind the line? Billy Nolan is saying no. The ball is still in play. <laughs> Bergen is still giving out to the umpires as WIT play on. The umpires are having a meeting behind the goal. <laughs> That's clue. one of the most unusual things I've ever seen in a game of hurling. Billy Nolan gives it back to Lyons. James is adamant. Went over. Good block by John Donnelly. That's too casual. And a little chop on Fergal Whiteley. Let's have another look. The umpires are calling the ref now, I think. Was this a goal? Yeah, not from that angle. I think that's a save of the tournament so far. Be interested to see what to do here because James Bergen is adamant it went over the line. Billy Nolan is arguing his point. Paul de Dwarf from Carlo is the referee. I don't think saw anything. It's either the cleverest goal or the best save that we've seen in the Fitzgibbon Cup so far this season. Square ball. <laughs> <laughs> it was none of the two. <laughs> Billy Nolan will be really mad because that was a fantastic <laughs> save. Brian Ryan guiding it into the path of Donnelly. Donnelly initially thought about it, then took a few steps forward and said, right, I'll go for it now. And that's wide. Well, we said that DCU were beginning to get away from WIT. They're still only five in front. Yeah. Um, you, still, you still feel it, you know, as the game moves on. They are getting the scores that little bit easier. What would a goal do for WIT? Kerwin Advantage. Hayes, free in. Yeah, again, run direct. Um, Connor, Kieran, Kieran Kerwin ran direct and uh, Connor Burke just the shoulder to the chest rather than open himself up and let him run into him. Made the decision easy for Paul Dwyer. IT Carlo still leading in the second half of extra time in Carlo 5 17 to 27 points against NUI Galway. My maths aren't great, but by my reckoning, that's what, 32 points to 27. Stephen Condon. Yeah, I'm not sure where you see that again, but I mean, it was a needless shoulder. If you're going to shoulder him, you may as well make sure you put him down. Otherwise, just allow him to run into your chest and, you know, and stand him up. Four between them. 
with 14 to go. Burke trying to get under it. McBride also trying to get there now, pouring in Damien Reck. WIT looked like they'd won it initially, now it's lost again. Reem McBride over it, comes out to Fergal Whiteley. Whiteley had his hands on the WIT player there. The referee says play on. It was Ross Smithers that went to ground under the pressure of White. Lee. Great stuff by Brian Ryan. <laughs> Free into DCU. Great play by Brian Ryan. He's, he's had a really strong second half. He's, driven, he's come out with some great ball. And, uh, you know, I think um, you see the, the hunger for, you know, he would desire to win that ball. You know, there was only going to be one winner there. Well, they're allowed to bring it forward because there was a little bit of back chat from one or two of the WIT players, Rory O'Connor, in a scoreable position. Puts it high, so high it goes over the back netting. It's a point for DCU and they lead by five. Rory O'Connor's first of the second half. So coming on for WIT here. Yeah, coming in is... Uh, Mikey Mahoney of the Mahoney's, as in Porrick and Phillips' younger brother. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's uh, Conal Flood coming off. He can find the target, can Mahoney. Getting a bit of an introduction from. Uh, well, if he's anything like his brothers, he knows where the posts are anyway. So. That's true, and he's able to handle introductions. <laughs> he's good in formal settings. Here comes John Donnelly. Chip in behind there by uh, Rhea McBride to James Bergen. Bergen turning and twisting. Smothered. Jim Ryan didn't give up on that one. James Burke. Lovely ball. Now can Donnelly finish? Oh, over the bar. Looked like he was kind of winding up for a goal shot and then just kind of popped over. Yeah, it looked like he was going to take the net off the hinges there, to be honest. But... Uh, I think he just got under it. I think he yeah, was going yeah. for goal. There's no doubt about that. Lovely ball to him by Rory O'Connor, though. Great ball, yeah. Brian Ryan steals it again. Trying to get away from Tom Barron. Oh, great pass inside to Damien Reck. Where there's oceans of space, Reck will just take his point. Yeah. Great, great score. Again, Brian Ryan's been really strong um, there. We've talked about uh, Caleb Lines on the other side and his strong running and what did he need. WT need more of that from him. It's, it's been Brian Ryan that's on this, the hard yards. Um, for DCU really in this second half again on the ball Brian Ryan collected great, it well down to Bergen Bergen oh it just gets away from him yeah great pass inside to Bergen who's in acres of space and he should have controlled the ball Mikey Mahoney teasing ball in behind swept up well by Evan Shefflin Foley Foley couldn't find his target, which was Rhea McBride. Ten minutes to go. Can WIT come up with a big finish? Even if they don't beat DCU, they'll want to challenge them at the very least. Tommy Walsh. Down the line it goes to Jack Prendergast. Prendergast inside. It's just about kept in possession by Tom Hayes. A uh, good hook. Or half block. The ex Tipperary underage player couldn't keep it on target, but as you say, yeah, no, it's good. No, it's good defending. It's Fergal Whiteley, I think I'll give him credit. He got back there and got a good hook. Burke. Well done. That's a free. Ross Smithers put to ground. Jim Ryan just a little bit loose with the shoulder. We well, look to put one in around the square. Hope for the best now. Billy Nolan. Nice. Takes his score. Good score, Good score by score. Billy Nolan and a really much needed score for WIT. Still a lot of work to do, but they're still hanging on in there. Come on, Jack. Come on, 
Six between them. I think after Stephen Condon, Billy Nolan could end up the second top scorer for WIT at this rate. Mahoney back to Nolan. De Poyer sends it up to Lyons. Bit of space for him to run into. Lyons can get into a shooting position here. Oh, it just didn't catch it right, but it turns out to be kind of a dropping ball. Paddy Smith trying to tidy it up. Kerwin makes it difficult. Pod, er. WIT not particularly pleased with some of the refereeing <laughs> decisions, and we apologise if you're offended by the way they're expressing that. Paddy Smith, you can argue, he should have done better with that. He was out in front for the ball, and he, he fumbled it, causing the problem. But he's he regained possession, played it out to Conor Burke, and it's... He's looking for James Burke, but James Burke was stuck to by Dupuyer. Hassett. Tommy Walsh, good ball. Oh, it's lost, and Rory O'Connor pounces. It was awkward for Dakin to deal with. Now it's into James Bergen. Bergen with just Hassett to beat. Is it to Jim Ryan? Ryan fumbles, but the chance isn't gone yet. Ryan ploughing on and getting his goal in the end. Yeah, to be honest, I thought the chance was gone. I was going to say, miscontrol the ball from James Bergen and then play the ball, a great ball to Jim Ryan who miscontrolled it as well. I thought the chance was gone, but uh, he recovered well and got a boot to it into the back of the net. You know, well, he did his best to make it difficult, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did, he did. He finished it well. Yeah, he used his strength to barge his way through and got a, uh, got a good good shot on it. The lads playing yesterday in the Sigurdsson would be proud of it. Well, the Rory and the Stieg fellas don't give up easy, do they? That was the case for Jim Ryan, who's tall and rangy but strong and a good full forward. Yeah, he's the kind of player that Kilkenny need right now. Well, I mean, you know, we, we've talked about the, the stars on, on show, you know, the so called stars, you know, the inter county players, but more often than not, you know, with Fitzgibbon, if you're going to win, you need, you need, you know, the unheard of players, you know, the guys that do a lot of the, the unseen work. And Jim Ryan has held that forward line, held the position for the guys around him, the likes of uh, Rory O'Connor to go wandering, you know, and he's been a. He's, he's proven a nuisance in there, you know, and he's chipped in with a couple of scores. He's been, you know. Prendergast. Inside to Barron, back out to Prendergast. They need goals. Robbie Flynn, free in at the very least. In fairness to WIT, they have kept working. They have, yeah, and it's a good run by... Uh, Jack Prendergast, you know, he's he's been fuller running all day. Billy Nolan is coming up because they have to go for gold from here. In fast he's already got one from a penalty. Nine between them. He has to go for nets here. that moment when you're standing and looking at him if you're on the TCU side and thinking please don't let this ball hit me because you know <laughs> he's going to put everything behind it that's where you tell the goalies take a step out now and <laughs> take over and you run back out the field and say lads I'll wait for the clearance now in bad news for DCU Lee Gannon is hobbling off so let's hope that uh, that injury is not too serious Billy Nolan they need a goal can he provide it Oh. No, it is a 65 at the very least. <laughs> Nolan's going to run back to goal because he's not going to hang around for the 65. Quick one, Caleb. Austin Gleason has come in for WIT. <laughs> well, he's down as number nine in the programme. He looks as... For for all the world, he looked like a guy who was not in any way togged out. <laughs> Austin Gleeson is in for WIT. <laughs> they're going to drop Gleason, it. Drop it in Lions drops it in. And it's well dealt with. Really well dealt with. WIT will go for it again. Well, Austin Gleeson was on the sideline. He was in a tracksuit, but he wasn't togged out. And to the surprise of everyone outside of WIT, he has come in. But can he make an impact? Here's Jack Prendergast. Prendergast looks to me like he's fouled. He's forced into a corner and is, after doing very well to win a line ball. Yeah, well, he, he, I mean, he can't be right. If they've left him to four minutes to the end to bring 
player of Austin's quality in. You'd imagine he's there. Uh, Lions. It's the last throw of the dice for him. And he just takes the score. Three minutes plus injury time to come. Eight between them. And he's taking up position full forward anyway, so I suppose to. The plan will be to get the ball long and early into him and hope something can come out of it. Look it out of the sky. Ger Mellerick also missing, by the way, for WIT. He's a huge loss. Despite the fact that he was injured, he actually played really well for Father O'Neill's in the All-Ireland Intermediate Final. They did lose to Tullerone. Tommy Walsh on the field for Tullerone that night. The two Tommy Walshes. Brilliantly won back by Jack Prendergast, who puts it inside to Kerwin. Kerwin is fouled, but it's outside the square. Cynical, cynical free from Brian Ryan. He knew, he knew what he was doing. Darren Mullen has come in for uh, obviously for uh, Ellie Gannon. Austin Gleeson is going to take it. Brian Ryan gladly taking a yellow card. We know Austin can hit them. Gleeson with two minutes to go. Can he revive WIT? Gleeson! Yes! It's a 65. Caleb Lyons will drop this one in. Lyons dropping it into the square. Kicking it away is Connor Burke and collecting it is Evan Shefflin. Really good take by Donald Burke. And now moving up the line is Rory O'Connor. Rory O'Connor into the corner forward position. It's a great ball into space, winds on the clock. Great take by Edmund Delaney, another Conaghy Shamrock star. Fouled by the fullback, and it's a free. No, he wasn't fouled, he was doing the fouling. It's in that corner of the ground, it's quite awkward to see as Nolan puts it down the wing. Condon goes the shout to Condon, running in front of him as Lions. Oh, Lions loses the first time, but gets it back second time. There's a route to goal here, Lions. Good block. Wide. The pressure was put on him there. I think it was Burke who got back to get something on it. Well, not the ball, but on Lions as he got the shot away. It wasn't Burke, a bigger part. It was Evan Shefflin, I think. WIT have found it really hard to find a route through the DCU defence. Rory O'Connor trying to get under this one. Now it's Damien Rick. Just bobbles away from him. Rory O'Connor tries to get it. Might fall for Burke. No, nope. instead falls for Depuyer of WIT. Going long is Tom Barron, but he can't get it away. It was blocked down, and it's Donald Burke from Nafina just down the road who drops it into the goalkeeper. Another really quality forward, you know, the, the DCU can bring in Donald Burke. He's, he's it's another block down. DCU's work rate really impressive in the last ball of John Donnelly. John Donnelly. He's about to put, pop this over. He might as well go for it because the game is done at this stage. And John the Donnelly score. adds to his statistics four points from play in the second half, six overall. What a game he's had. Yeah, and he's so efficient, you know, he gets the ball. He's such a clean striker of it, you know, he's, he's got some great scores tonight. Carlo IT or IT Carlo of Edgar Parton 5.21 NUI go with 28 points of final score in Carlo highlights available of that soon on the uh, Electric Ireland social media <laughs> Twitter page and of course the uh, GA Higher Education social media channels Paddy Smith taking no chance he's just getting a boot to get it away from Austin Gleeson sign of a good defender does the exact same thing while it's scoreless as he does when they're cruising in injury time Well, DCU, Dokus Aaron have set up a rematch, a grudge match with UCC who beat them in WIT, funnily enough, in the semi-final last year. Tommy Walsh, Rory O'Connor intercepts, Rory O'Connor. He's pulled it yeah. left. He knew it was a 50-50 shot at best.
Kerwin tries to get under it and can't. That's Connor Burke. These players, many of them will come up against each other again in the league and throughout the summer. Damien Rick. Rick puts on the afterburners. Got away from Whiteley. John Donnelly's in acres of space over on the right side if anyone sees him, just in front of us. Whiteley, who's played for Dublin for a couple of years now. Donald Burke probably could have gone for it, but instead tried to stick pass. Barron. Mahoney. Here's Austin one in. Gleason is in the square. Kerwin collects. Kerwin knows he has to go for goal, and Paddy Smith just drives him out, and he wins the free. Does finish it, but the whistle was yeah, it, after being blown. Like I see that again. I thought Paddy Smith did well. He, he just used his strengths to usher him out towards the sideline. Well, let's have a look. Here we go. Okay, maybe he had he had the arm around him a bit. You know, Paddy Smith's a strong player. Although, to be fair to Kieran Curran, he doesn't look like a small guy either. But uh, Austin Gleeson. Oh, oh good goal. goal! It's too late to make a big difference, but it does put a gloss yeah. on the scoreline. And it, you can see Gleeson is almost emotionless, having struck it. And his top spin on it as well, which makes it even harder to save. You can see if you see it again, he com comes over the top of the ball and with a spin on it. So it almost kind of loops in. Well, that's it. DCU, I won't say cruise to a victory in the end, but certainly they were the better team throughout and are very much deserving of the victory. They'll go on to the semi-final on Saturday week, as in February 8th. Uh, where they'll play UCC. That's here at the DCU Sports Grounds and it does make a difference, I suppose, to be at home. But what about tonight's game? Brian, what did you make of it? Yeah, I mean, as you said, um, I, I always got the sense that DCU had enough in the tank. They never really looked... You never felt that, that WIT, you know, had enough firepower to, to, to threaten, the, you know, the results, you know, and uh, I suppose DCU, you know, did enough. It's, it's probably what you could say, you know, they, they got through the match, looked decent in patches, um, you know, the bit of more firepower up front, a bit more quality, I suppose, with the likes of uh, John Donnelly and uh, uh, Ree McBride and, and, and Rory, Rory O'Connor and that was a difference, you know, uh, and a greater spread of scores as well. Well, DCU do what they need to do. They're through to the final four. DCU, Doker Aaron 123, Waterford Institute of Technology, 214. So the semi-final lineup is complete. It will be Mary Immaculate College, managed by Jamie Wall, up against IT Carlo, managed by DCU or managed by uh, by uh, DJ Carey. DCU Docus Aaron hosting UCC here. That's a double header uh, here on Saturday, February eighth, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a really decent and enjoyable uh, day. Is hurting. You'll be able to watch it here, of course, and that will be um, that will be uh, that will be a good distraction from the general election, I think. Well, as we say, DCU were pretty decent at times tonight. Let's uh, Brian Hogan go through their best bits. Yeah, as I said, WT started the second half strong. You know, again, another place ball, score from place ball, which is typical of the game for WIT. But John Donnelly, you know, with a lovely score, lovely wristy score over the bar. Again, just a mistake by Paddy Smith. And, uh, you know, one of the few scores that WIT got, you know, from play. Here's another one. This one was from uh, Tom Barron. They needed more of these, you know, from distance to ask questions of uh, DCU. But again, DCU popped up uh, one of their inter-county players, Reen, Reen McBride, with a good, well-worked score. You know, another good free from Stephen Conan, who was, you know, who was the, probably their, the most dangerous forward in the night, was consistent from play spalls and offered a threat from, from open play also. But they just didn't get enough of that. And you can see, you know, three scores, one after another, all play spalls for, for, for WT, where they... And they, you know, they caused trouble when they ran at them. But DCU, again, working the ball, they got into a bit of a rhythm, worked the ball around and got some great scores. Again, here you see a, a, play, a ball across from James Burke. And I think it was Jim Ryan got a, a point and Jim Ryan had a good game. Brian Ryan had a super great second half, really strong, you know, strong running, popped the ball against James Burke, you know, from Kildare and a, a great score. And James Burke again popped up with the ball. Controversial <laughs> moment in the second half. It's a great pass by James Burke to, to Kira, James Bergen. And uh, James Bergen was convinced it was a goal. Billy Nolan was convinced it was a, a save of the year. And the umpires were convinced it was a square ball. <laughs> so, uh, but ultimately, it was the ref's, the ref's decision. Um, yeah, and again, look at another place ball. You know, WT were relying on him just, just to hang into the match. Um, two good free takers, to be fair. You know, Rory O'Connor was, I think he was 100% or close to it. 
great ball by Rory O'Connor. You know, no one saw that on. He popped the ball out of you know out of a bundle of players, John Donnelly, and drove it over the bar. Damien Reck, you know, we've seen him for a a really strong runner, and he popped up with a great score through, through the middle. You know, and cut the defence open. Billy Nolan, you know, he had a good day at the office. He, he scored a, certainly the goal, and there's a point from him, and he pulled off one or two good saves. And uh, good, you know, recovering from a poor first touch. Jim Ryan, who was who was a constant threat during the match, you know, was a physical presence, threw himself around and drove in and got a boot to the ball to the net. You know, I thought the chance was gone just when he fumbled it there. WT got bodies back, but he didn't give it up. Stayed driving forward and kicked the, and kicked the ball to the net. And I suppose really once they got that goal, that was it. It was, it was done and dusted. Billy Nolan tried to do what he did in the first half, you know, and, and put the ball in the back of the net again, but uh, it was well saved. And uh, yeah, there were just it really, it was just you seeing out the match at that stage. It wasn't going to be in any doubt. And I suppose WT threw everything at them by bringing on Austin Gleeson. And uh, yeah, look. He, he stepped up with a grip with a with a with a goal at the end from a from a free, but it was too little, too late for for WIT. Thank you very much, Brian. So DCU Jokers there in sealing their spot in the semi-final of the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup. James Bergen of Conaghy Shamrocks, Kilkenny, and of course tonight DCU Jokers there. You must be very pleased with your night's work. Ah, uh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, uh, we came out and chopped there in the second half. We were, went in there at six points up half time. Some people would say it mightn't be enough with that wind. It was certainly a strong wind, but we used the ball smartly and short, short passes up the line and nearly suited us more so playing with the wind. And so we came out in tops and airs, thank God. So. Was there times in the game where you didn't take advantage of the possession you had and the positions you have? Should you have been a bit more clinical? Yeah, certainly we had a few goal chances there in the second half that we could have went our way. Like uh, Billy Nolan goal pulled off two outrageous uh, saves. He's a top class keeper there, and you need to be putting them away right in the corner, corner of the net to get make sure you get your goal. So look, we could have had a few more chances there that we could have put them away in the start to the middle of the second half. But look. That's not taking that away from Billy Owen and it was outrageous saves out of him, so that's it. Um. It's UCC here in the semi-final on Saturday week. Last year they beat you after extra time in what we might call controversial circumstances at the Waterford Institute of Technology. Is this a revenge mission? Is this a grudge match? Uh, you were playing that night, of course. Yeah, exactly. Look, yeah, things just didn't went our way that night. Like we, it was our own fault. We left, let them in, let them in the match there in extra time where we should have kicked away. We missed, I missed a free or two, and we missed a few uh, scores on, in extra time, and we should have had them gone and buried. And look. They got a penalty, whether it was a penalty or not, look, it's up to their own fault. We had it in our own hands and they had got converted the penalty. So, look, now we have, now have a chance now to get on, get on top now on Saturday week. Look, they're coming up to our patch and look, we're only going out to get a win and nothing else, thinking in their mind, bar a win. Like, we're hosting this thing and the Sigerson you've seen last night won, won in a great fashion. And look, it's something that would be bringing great happiness to DCU if we could get over the line or UCC. It's one game at a time. And look, our sole focus is on that match. And look, we'll see what happens now on Saturday week. Of course, you are going for a double DCU winning the Sigerson Cup last night. Just before I let you go, what would it mean to this squad and how much of a driver is it for this squad to try and be the first DCU team to win if it's given or are you thinking like that because there's a big obstacle in that semi-final coming up no like look people will be saying that would be the first time that we could have a chance of winning if it's given but look it's only one game at a time and we're looking at the UCC match and we know what they're going to bring like there's lads there that are in the Cork senior panel and they're not even starting on the, starting on the team and look they've got strength and depth in every line of, the, uh, line of the pitch and look we're just going to have to go back to the drawing board and see where we can suss up our strengths and suss up their weaknesses and see what where we can come out on top and look that's that's the only thing that we're going to be concerned about now from now and Saturday week is get a win and look everyone else takes care of itself after that well, it should be a great match. Well done on tonight, James Bergen of Conaghy Shamrocks, Kilkenny, and of course, uh, DCU Dokus here. And that's it from the DCU Sports Grounds, where it's been a busy couple of days. DCU winning the Sigerson last night and tonight, sealing their place in the semi final of the Fitzgibbon, where they will play UCC on Saturday week. And that will be a very interesting tie indeed. Of course, Mary Macla College will take on IT Carlo in the other semi final. IT Carlo getting the win uh, against NUI Galway in Carlo tonight after extra time. My thanks to you for watching this evening. That's it from the DCU Sports Grounds. Uh, good night and good luck.